Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm back. I'm back in my new office here in Sydney, Australia. I moved just across the hallway. I think you would have seen me, last time you would have seen me, I was at a slightly different desk, slightly different location. Well, I'm in the same place, just a different room. And that's why I didn't post an eclipse video. Uh, those of you who've been following my meditation series, you know that at each new moon and full moon, I've been doing a meditation. And there's one of you out there I know who is following every single one of them and really likes them. And I kept thinking every day, I've got to do a video, I've got to do a video, I've got to make that eclipse video. And I just never got round to it because what happened with me is that I just became really exhausted. There was something about moving across the hallway <laughs> that really took my energy out. I don't know why. Well, it was the eclipse. I also felt like in the lead up to that eclipse, I definitely could feel that I was processing energy that wasn't mine. And I have some ideas. Uh, some of it was maybe a bit local, but I think some of it was a bit collective as well. I don't know what it was, but I do know that I was processing a lot of energy. I was just thoroughly exhausted when you know I, I made the move. And yeah, for me, it turns out that that eclipse was, was really major, but in a good way, because I was remembering last year and uh, the similar eclipse at around the similar time, I think it was. And, oh, I was having a terrible time last year. So this time I experienced the solar eclipse in the way that it should be experienced, which is to say it should jump you forward in some aspect of your life. And for me, I do feel like I've been jumped forward just within a few days. Um, a, a few days of that eclipse happening, I noticed that, yep, pretty much got my new desk, my new little office set up here, which I hope you enjoy. And, and this is a really good little setup because I'll be able to film here during the day as well as at night time. I tested it, I thought it looks good both daytime and nighttime, so that's really good. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I, I, I managed to get this sorted out. My health improved a lot. So thank you as well, everybody, for the well wishes. Thank you so much. So many of you have sent the kindest messages and have been really supportive. I am a lot better now. And following the advice of, I know the dietary advice that someone shared with me here, that was helpful. I've been definitely following the advice of David Hawkins. And in coming videos, I'll share with you all the things that helped me that he uh, wrote in his book, Healing and Recovery. So stick around on this channel and you'll be able to see some good stuff from uh, some interesting people like David Hawkins. So David Hawkins definitely helped a lot. And yeah, all the natural things that I did, homeopathy was a big help. I'm still dealing with that issue, that health challenge, but uh, it's a lot better and I'm able to start doing my work again, which I'm so happy about. So after this eclipse on the 5th of July, I'm going to reinstate my website. You'll be able to book me for a reading, so please do book me, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna offer 15 minute sessions, I think, and half hour sessions, which will be pre-recorded and sent to you, or if you wanna do it over Zoom or Skype, Absolutely, you just have to let me know. The other thing I wanted to say is that if you have been with me in the past at a different rate or we had a different financial arrangement or whatever it was, you just let me know. You just email me that I'd like to be at my rate that I was on before, okay? And uh, I would gladly honor that. So anyone who's returning um, know that that's always available to you. So let me have a look at my notes. I've got my laptop down below as I usually do. I like to look up and see. Yeah, so solar eclipse, big for me. I think I've covered that. Um, I will be posting more videos. So please subscribe, please stay tuned and please look out for what's new. Um, as always in my mind, typical YouTuber content creator thing, I always think I'd love to post, you know, three per week or something like that, but I'm just gonna, Go with the flow, go with my energy, which could be a bit up and down. Um, so I'll see how I go. 
and with my website um, that will you know be up but if I get too busy I will of course take it down um, because I like to make sure that you guys get a really high quality reading from me so I like my energy to be um, in top shape because I use uh, my energetic field to tune into you as well now in the last video I think I said that I was going to do a video about Vandana Shiva it's still on my list I'm definitely going to do it uh, ancient mariner hello ahoy there I am so happy to hear from you as always and I, I've got a note here that you wanted a video about the United States over the next few years yes I would love to do that I am up for doing that I know in the past I've said I don't look at country charts and things like that and I don't trust them and all that but no, I'm into it now <laughs> I'm into outer planets and country charts I'll look at I'll look at the United States I did have a sneaky peek and I did see that pretty sure it's a Pluto natal return going on I, I would I would say next four or five years are going to be um, interesting how about I use that word for now a little placeholder word there I'm excited to do that video so I Vandana Shiva uh, United States chart I'm going to get the master's series going again I'm really excited to do that so hopefully I, I find the time and the inspiration and the energy and and all that uh, I won't push myself I, I really I'm really excited to make all this stuff so let's see if I can um, let's see how I go with that I think when I think when I was in London I was managing like I oh, was I doing one a week I think at one stage I was but anyway, all right, I'm not going to pressure myself. I'm not going to say to myself, I have to have it. Like all the rules are out the window now, right? So um, we've got to look after our health and that's the most important thing. Uh, one more eclipse. Yes. So in brief, overall, well, we're at seven minutes already. I always do this. Uh, in brief, overall, what's going on in the sky? I, I had a look at July and to me, I think it's the eclipse that's, the big news of next month 5th July eclipse that's really the big thing and I've got a note here that it's bringing the spotlight back to leadership back to beliefs back to decision making uh, the last eclipse was a bit more personal um, and a bit more social but whereas this we're kind of we're coming back to all that heavy energy of you know Pluto, Saturn, Jupiter, all the big forces around there and then we've got the moon kind of lighting that up uh, on, that, on that sort of full moon eclipse situation so yeah I think it's, it's kind of back to what's being discussed you know in, in, the, uh, in the news again and, and beliefs, decision making all this kind of thing. I saw a headline about how there's, I think, a small English city that's on lockdown again, but just the city. And so, I mean, isn't it? It's this thing of like the leadership's delighted by these new powers that they have that oh, we can turn a city on and off, you know, or like we can, that's the kind of control, you know, how it's that. It, it's more of this kind of thing, I think. And um, yeah, that's, that's what it feels like. So I've got a note here, something ending in public life or on the world stage. A cycle is completing, there's a culmination of energy, something maybe that could end um, in public life or on the world stage. So that, that's quite interesting. Now, I also wanted to say that th there are six eclipses this year and that is a little bit rare. Uh, and the next eclipses are going to be... 29 November, 29 to 30 November 2020 lunar eclipse and 14 December solar eclipse as well. So that is, um, that's going to be interesting. The last time we had six apparently was 2011. It is a little bit rare to have six. So this is quite a powerful year. And I mean, it's already been a, such a powerful year. I think June, did anyone else feel that June was really full on for me that was just such a full on month it was not in a bad way it was I was kind of busy and I was kind of um, you know the, yeah but there was a lot going on there was a lot of energy and I did feel like I was processing energy it was it was kind of bizarre but that, there was this one week I think it was in the lead up to that 21 June eclipse where I was definitely processing some stuff 
which I don't often do and I don't want to do. <laughs> I definitely don't want to do that. Um, yeah, and I've got a note here that the last time I did a monthly was in Feb. So it's been a really long time for me to be doing these monthlies. I've really missed it, you know. I've really missed doing these videos. So I'm so happy to be back. So guys, how about we get stuck into, into our little mini reports and... Um, and look, as, as for that last eclipse meditation, I think I've just missed the timing for it, haven't I? I'll just start again. We've got one coming, so hopefully I get to release a meditation for you guys. Um, for you guys, I think 5th July, yeah, I've got a few days. And also, apologies for this video being really late. I'm, I'm late on this video too, but it's something, right? So... Why don't we get stuck into the monthly reports? It's been a long time and I'm excited to do this. How are we doing for time? 11 minutes, it's okay. Aries moon, Aries moon, welcome. Welcome, I hope you're well. Uh, we're gonna take a look at a couple of things today. It's just a very brief overview, nothing major. I just wanna talk about the 5th of July eclipse. It's gonna be a culmination or completion in connection with your work, your beliefs, your intellect, right? Um, any academic work that you've been doing, perhaps something in regards to your father as well. So we are looking at ninth house matters here. Could be something around the concept of travel for you. Perhaps you, you no longer feel the same way about travel. I know that um, a lot of us are reevaluating what travel is in our lives and. Um, you know, how, how we want to experience that going forward. And look, I'm sure travel will, will happen again in that grand sort of long distance flying kind of way that you probably like. Well, Aries moon, yes, you would do. I was thinking of Sagittarius moon. But we're in the ninth house here. That's why I'm thinking Sagittarian things. Look, it's, but you would like travel. I, I no doubt about that. But the thing is, we're all reevaluating what that is in our lives. I know for me, I've looked at my life and I've kind of gone, God, I'm glad I've seen quite a few things. And, um, but I've noticed my appetite for all of that has gone right down. So perhaps your thoughts on what travel means will change. Uh, Venus going direct is good for all of us, obviously. Um, providing lovely energy with the family and friends for you. You might purchase something new. You might spoil yourself. There's something that you've been eyeing out if you need to treat yourself. Um, this Venus energy is happening, I think, in your second house. It's, it's absolutely beautiful energy. So um, do treat yourself if you feel the need. Okay, maybe you, maybe you want to try something new in terms of food, cooking. Maybe you want to cook something amazing. Um, that would be a lovely thing to do with this Venus energy, to get creative in the kitchen with family if you can. So Aries Moon... That is your little overview for today. Taurus Moon, we're going to welcome Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. And this is a really nice month for you. Uh, we've got Venus going forward. This should be good for your health, actually. So health-wise, you should be feeling quite good. Perhaps, uh, oh, I was going to say perhaps Mars. No, Mars is 11th from your moon. Oh, this is great. Your energy should be good and your health should be good. So this is great. Um, 5th July eclipse happening 8th from your moon so you could be rethinking what it means to depend on others right the concept of dependence or shared resources or you know um, working with others uh, especially family okay family extended family in-laws that type of thing so this could be the end of a cycle potentially of depending on others you know um, maybe you'll make quite a resolution to change um, in that way or that you want to become more independent or something like that uh, perhaps you find the right balance for you others and shared resources so this is good this is a good culmination happening here I think it's more mental as well than anything else um, Mars 11th from your moon yay this is fantastic I love this placement so act do make it happen you know go for it all that kind of energy if you have the energy and you want to make something or build something or do something or go somewhere make it happen that is definitely my advice Taurus moon so enjoy that good energy of yours 
All right, we're now going to welcome Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So you have got a nice Venus transit direct in the 12th house. Okay, this is great. This is a great time to escape, um, to retreat, anything spiritual going within. If you feel like you want hermit mode time, take it. And believe me, I've been loving hermit mode. I am like 100% in <laughs> hermit mode, have been for a while. I, I love it. So uh, I've got a note here, indulge in spiritual things that you love, definitely. Um, 5th July eclipse, 7th from your moon. Okay, so be prepared to experience a culmination in regards to partnerships. Now, this could be marriage, this could be business, okay? Um, and it could be around your thoughts. Perhaps you might come to some conclusions about your role in a partnership, about someone else's role in a partnership. Perhaps, you know, some, something's just going to make sense to you. And you're going to know going forward, you know, how much effort. It, it's that weighing up of effort. Am I putting too much effort, not enough effort, all this kind of thing. There will be some things, major things like that, that occur to you. Um, you'll come to a greater understanding about what you believe in those areas. So Gemini Moon, I wish you well. And we're going to welcome Cancer Moon. Cancer Moon, welcome. Uh, this is a very brief overview today. So we're going to have a look at your 5th July eclipse. Um, what's happening there? It's happening in your 6th house. Okay, so you're going to come to some interesting conclusions about how other people should be treated, your beliefs around justice, what it means to serve, what it means to be of service. You're going to come to a culmination in this area or conclusions about this area. Right, you're going to come to some deep understandings about what it means to judge and what it means to be judged. Right, um, Mental clarity uh, should be there for you and it could be to do with relationships uh, as well. Um, but Venus, I'm also looking at Venus. Venus is beautifully placed 11th from your moon. So that's a really nice energy there. And that's something that you've got to look forward to. So this is great for gains, friendships, um, connections, popularity, all that kind of thing. So you've got some nice energy in there, Cancer Moon. And I wish you well. We are now going to welcome Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So it's a very brief overview today, nothing too long. Uh, I just want to take a look at the 5th of July eclipse which for you is happening fifth from your moon. So what does that mean? It means that you'll complete a major creative endeavor or project of some kind. If you've been working on something big, if you've been, especially in regards to your creativity, uh, you know, this, it, this could be the time where it culminates, it comes to a close, it finishes, or there's a certain cycle within that project that, that reaches maturity. Um, so that would be amazing. Uh, it could also be that you understand something about why a certain lover was in your life. So mentally, you might get some mental clarity um, or an understanding about oh why that person was in my life. If there's sort of a, an old flame that you never quite understood or they ghosted you or it didn't work out or there might be some resolution or mental understanding that comes uh, about why that happened. So, yeah, I've got a note here, you'll get some ahas regarding your love life. Mars is eighth from your moon. You might have the energy to do things and, and what kind of things. It could be around your occult studies. Perhaps there's something you've always wanted to study. I know with me, I'm really enjoying studying tarot as a system right now. I just think it's fantastic. So I've been, you know, even though I'm not Leo Moon, I have had energy around looking at these things lately um, but you, you know you might also have the energy to do things with family greater family in-laws or something in connection with shared resources as well so Leo Moon thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Virgo Moon Virgo Moon welcome uh, we're going to take a look at the 5th of July eclipse which is happening fourth from your moon uh, okay this is around like you might finish a major home renovation project, you may move, and I'm not talking about like a big move of house, I'm talking about a small move like what I did, which was from across the hallway here. <laughs> that was my big move that I made. So, you know, or you might move desks or something like that. 
but there could be something in regards to home or home life that will come to a completion or the end of a cycle. You might finish a project in regards to your home. It could even just be a completion on how you feel about something to do with your home or even your mother as well. This could be mother related too. Um, so it's a culmination energy, it's a completion energy and it's around that kind of domestic scene sort of area of your life. Now we've got Venus is very nicely placed ninth from your moon. This is beautiful energy. So this is really great energy for studies, for your intellect, studying something new, finding a new guru perhaps. Um, it's a really great time to grow intellectually. So um, yeah, I always like that kind of energy because you know, I'm always reading most of the time anyway, but to have a spike in that ninth house of good energy like this means that um, you'll probably retain a lot of information. You'll grow. It, this is really nice. So um, good time to go within, good time to be spiritual, great time to read. All right, Virgo Moon, thank you so much for stopping by. And we're now going to welcome Libra Moon. Libra Moon, welcome. I'm just looking at the time, 21 minutes. I think we'll get through this. Um, so this is just a very quick overview. We're going to talk about the 5th of July eclipse, which is happening third from your moon. So perhaps you'll complete something in regards to a friendship uh, or with colleagues, peers, people around you who are on your level. There'll be some kind of conclusion maybe that you reach about certain people. Uh, you might, yeah, I've got a note here, you might come to conclusions about certain people in your life and will feel courage, you'll feel courageous to make changes. You'll know what are the changes that need to be made and um, I do believe it should be okay for you to act on that if you need to. Uh, Venus is nicely placed eighth from your moon. This is a great time to spend with family or in-laws. So that's nice energy for you there. Oh, beautiful Libra moon, you've got a good time. Uh, Mars is brilliantly placed six from your moon. So you will have the energy to do, you'll have the energy to do quite a lot. Not everyone's got a good Mars transit, you've got one. There are three out of 12 signs. You're one of the lucky ones who's having a good Mars transit. So you'll have the energy to do, to take on challenges, to serve, to step up your career. Yeah, sixth house, if you have to take on competitors or uh, deal with, I don't wanna say enemies, but that's kind of one of the words that's associated with the sixth house. So it's a good Mars placement, Libra Moon. Uh, good one. So I wish you well and we're now going to welcome Scorpio Moon. Scorpio Moon, welcome. We've got like a minute left here so I'm going to try and be quick. Um, Scorpio Moon, now 5th of July eclipse is happening second from your moon. You're going to come to some conclusions around family members uh, and how your resources are organized. Okay, or it could just be to do with your savings, your big money, your wealth. There'll be some conclusion or understanding that you're going to come to and you know after this eclipse, you're going to feel good. It's, it should be a good thing. This can be a deep and introspective time for you. Sun, Rahu, Mercury in your eighth house can light up a situation that has previously been dark or murky. And that's in regards to family, in-laws as well. Okay, so I've got a note here. Take time to rest if you can. Don't push it this month. That's my advice there, Scorpio Moon. So we are now going to meet... Sagittarius Moon. Sagittarius Moon, thank you so much for joining. This is a very brief overview. I'm not going to take too long here. So we're looking at the 5th of July eclipse, which is happening directly on your moon. <clears throat> this is really quite major. This is big. Sagittarius Moon, you're always going through big things, aren't you? You're always going through these major kind of huge things and this is, this is a big one so I've got a note here that you'll come to some very big conclusions about who you are because Sagittarius moon you, it's about the truth it's about the big things it's about big vision there's a bigness here it's who you are so I've got a note here you will come to some very big conclusions about who you are your purpose in life it's that visionary type stuff there'll be a culmination energy here where you get some deep realizations uh, about yourself and these are deep realizations coming your way. So I've got a note here, keep a dream journal at this time. So around the 5th of July type time. Um, we've got Mars in your fourth house. You may feel a bit restless if you're stuck at home. So I've got a note here, put that spare energy in exercise. 
get yourself a fantastic exercise regime. I've been doing um, this kind of like yoga type lymphatic exercises, which takes about 10 minutes per day. And I do about 15 minutes of Kapalapati breathing per day. Um, they're really simple exercises. Most of them I'm sitting down to do them. So, you know, it's, it's nothing intense, but they're really good. And it's that kind of thing. It's like what kind of, if you're not doing exercise every day, is there some five or 10 minute thing you can do every day? And that's the kind of thing I started with me. I started just with Kabalpati breathing. I started with one and a half minutes per day. And I built it up to 15. So, um, so yeah, so if there's exercise, maybe that might be a thing to do. I've got a note here, local walks, perhaps meeting up with a friend if you can, that kind of thing. But there is a restlessness about your Mars. That's why I suggest that. So, um, but I mean, ultimately, look, you're going through a big eclipse here. And once that passes, it's going to be kind of chill time, I think, for about a month and a half. And then I think end of August, mid to end of August, is going to start to get a bit interesting um, for about three months. So, yeah, Sag Moon, I've given you a lot there. I haven't given anyone else a three-month overview, but I've given one to you. So um, I hope you're well, and yeah, I'll see you next time. All right, Capricorn Moon, we're going to welcome Capricorn Moon. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this is a very brief overview. Uh, we're looking at the 5th of July eclipse, which for you is happening 12th from your moon. Hmm. So, what does this mean? You'll come to some deep spiritual realizations and conclusions. Yeah, and I've got a note here. Look critically at yourself. What do you do in your life to escape? All right, and it could be that you're going to balance out escapism with doing and action in the world. Okay, so while escapism is needed, you may discover that and some escapism hasn't been helping you in your life achieve the goals and the things that you need to get on and do, right? So uh, I would say you're going to be evaluating what role escapism plays in your life. And you know, that activity of evaluating escapism in your life is going to be helped by both Mars and Venus. This is really interesting because you've got Mars energy, which is giving you the courage and wherewithal to do more, to act more, to be courageous. This is fantastic. So that's Mars in your third house there, I think. And you've got Venus fifth from your moon, which is also great. It's going to make you more creative. So you've got some really nice energies to play with here, Capricorn Moon. You're going to have a good time, I think. Um, and I think this month is, could be quite invigorating and enlightening for you. You might um, come to some really amazing conclusions uh, that, that you're going to rely on going forward for some time. So Capricorn Moon, thank you so much for tuning in. And we're going to welcome Aquarius Moon. Aquarius Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this is a very brief overview. We're looking at the 5th of July eclipse, which is 11th from your moon. So something will culminate or come to, con come to a conclusion. You may come to a conclusion in terms of your work, money, gains, something to do with your professional network circle. Definitely work, though. I think you might come to conclusions about who you are, what you're here to offer the world, and what you really want to do long term. Okay, this is a great eclipse to be thinking about that and to be coming to some real firm conclusions about, yes, okay, I want to do this and I no longer want to do that. I, I, this is who I am. I need to reinvent myself. I need to reinvent my image. Maybe you need to update your LinkedIn. You need to do something like that. Maybe it's something uh, like that. So that's a, this is a really good activity for 5th of July. Venus is fourth from your moon. Oh, it's a beautiful energy. You've got great energy for being at home. Oh, lucky you, because most of us are at home, right? So this is great. Uh, and you've got Mars second from your moon. Okay, so you are at home, and there's some lovely energy there, but there's also Mars second from your moon. So watch what you say to family members. But being with family members, exercising at home, cooking up delicious meals, all that kind of thing, Aquarius moon, that's that's. Good, there's good energy for all of that. So, um, and as I say, some big conclusions about who you are in terms of your work. All right, and we're now going to welcome Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, 5th July eclipse. Where is that happening? It's happening 10th from your moon. So a cycle is going to end regarding your work or professional sphere. It could be to do with, yeah, career or money, right? A big cycle is going to come to a conclusion. 
It could be something regarding how you think about work, how you see yourself. It's a little bit like Aquarius Moon, actually. It, it, it's, and it's values, it's um, the meaning of work, who you are professionally, right? The, there's an internal currency change going on in regards to work, like where you spend your life force energy in terms of work, you might decide to spend it somewhere else, but there's a, there's a shift or a change that's gonna happen here. It's really very interesting. Um, Venus is third from your moon, make, make you very courageous, which is wonderful. Um, but if you feel tired and you feel like, you know, maybe you don't have the energy to act, that's understandable because Mars is in your first house which may make you tired. So it's a really interesting thing you've got going on there with um, Venus and Mars. Venus on the one hand making you feel courageous, making you think you have the energy, but then Mars energy, and, and depending on how these play out in your chart, um, you know, but Mars could be draining you possibly. So Pisces Moon, that's all I have for you today. And uh, for anyone who's watched the whole thing, thank you so much. But um, I always end up just talking to Pisces Moon at this bit. What I want to say is please do subscribe. Please do like, share, comment, dislike, whatever it is you feel. Express yourself freely in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you next time.